Good morning. Greetings from Santa Barbara, California. Um, I'm attending Metabolic Health Summit right now. And yesterday, and I am waiting for my gym to open. <laughs> they don't open till 7. Oh man, it's been a journey. <laughs> I got here at 5.30, drove to another part of town to two gyms that said they were open, weren't open. I found one that was open, but it was like really scary. <laughs> I was like, there were like chain bars on the windows and you had to like go down. I, I got scared. I left. So I came back. I'm walking and I'm waiting for my gym to open. And I thought I would share with you guys. Yesterday I posted in my story that I was like at the gym and I'm like doing one of the most important things for metabolic health before I attend metabolic health summit. And if you're not familiar with this conference, it's kind of the science it's, it's scientists and researchers from all over the world talking about therapeutic applications of a ketogenic diet is kind of a big focus but metabolic health in general and what's his name dr colin champ i heard him present yesterday about muscle muscle for metabolic health in cancer patients okay and this was like really really interesting um, he was talking specifically about breast cancer, a study they had done on women with breast cancer and the reduction of reoccurrence of breast cancer depending on the intensity level that they did in weight training, right? And so it was, hey guys, thank you for tuning in. It was so crazy that he, they, he showed this like side by side of these women. One of them was 67 years old. I think the other one was 75 if I'm not mistaken and showed how weight training, these women had never trained in their lives, how weight training specifically for hypertrophy and strength was part of their recovery. <laughs> so they have a, a, a clinic, it's a gym, where they take cancer patients and help have them start weight training, which what would we normally think? I mean, this was like, it's like normally you're like, ah, they have cancer, like <laughs> don't push them. And they're like really paradigm flipping that and they're having cancer patients lift weight, lift weights older women's, women in their 60s and 70s and showing improved health outcomes from this because of the metabolic upgrades that they get. Because so much of this cancer research that they're talking about at Metabolic Health Summit is showing how, it, I mean, we have mental health stuff, cancer, all of these therapeutic applications. And they're talking about all these scientists and researchers from all over the world. I heard a woman from Imperial College present yesterday, one of the researchers there. Uh, but anyway, they're talking about how all of these things are rooted in poor metabolic health. So hearing him talk about muscle, strength, and hypertrophy, do you guys know what that means? Do you know the difference? The, the different hypertrophy is, is training in a way for muscle growth. Strength is training in a way to enhance the health of the nervous system and that neuromuscular connection. So guess what you have to do for both of those? You got to lift heavy. So strength specifically is heavy, lower rep ranges, very heavy lifting. Do you, do you, can you kind of feel the difference in your body? Imagine you're like, I'm squatting. I got a big heavy weight and I got to like, <sighs> drive really hard, right? Like power lifting, <laughs> right? That's, it's going to like light up your nervous system. Your CNS hypertrophy is like really pushing your muscles to fatigue. And they're, they're talking about how those are crucial elements of metabolic health. And most of us, at least those of us who, those of us who are training know that because guess what happens? The freaking lights turn on in your body. I want no one to go through a life in which the, like, it's your nervous system slowly loses connection, strength. It's like the lights are going out. And so if you want to have longevity, if you want to have a healthy metabolism, like metabolism is so much more than just fat loss. <laughs> it's, 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 it's our entire mental health, our longevity, the energy with which we show up every day in our lives. Okay. So anyway, just wanted to make a push for that because I feel like we, we live in this like self magazine mentality where all of our like pursuits of health are so freaking like vain and surface level. And it's all about like looking a certain way and the entire health of our body, our true health thriving from the inside out depends 
on us eating nutritious foods and freaking crushing it sometimes. If you want to talk heart rate variability, right? Do you guys know what heart rate variability is? HRV, have you guys heard about this? It's basically the, the variation in, in the time in between your heartbeats throughout the day. So a high variation, meaning sometimes you're and sometimes you're really slow, is healthy. Our bodies were designed to be able to hit it hard sometimes and also be able to come back down and recover. And the more you train, the more you get some high heart rate stuff going, your cardiovascular system is healthier. You can hit high intensity levels. When you need to go, you can go. And you also know how to bring yourself back down and be comfortable and rest and pause and recovery and breathe and all those things. That is a key indicator of longevity and quality of life. By the way, what are these trees? What are these trees? Californians, what are these magical trees? They're so beautiful. I don't know what these are, but <laughs> they're so pretty. What are these? I know one of you guys knows what these are. They're everywhere. It's gorgeous. Um, so just wanted to share that with you guys that like, I mean, this is a cancer. These are cancer researchers talking about the importance of strength and hypertrophy for disease prevention. So much of my focus these days in health coaching is, is around the nervous system and, and having a regulated nervous system. What does that mean? That means, yes, you can go in fight or flight mode. You can hit it. You can freaking go when you need to go. And you can also come back down, just like I'm talking about with HRV. And guess what? Emotions. Gosh, California. Gosh, so pretty here. Oh my gosh, look at this. That is so pretty. Okay, wow. Um, so emotions are a big part of that too. But guess what? You, have you guys ever heard about how like when you smile, just that, even if you're like feeling down and blue, just the act of smiling can release happy chemicals in your body. Everything in the body is a two way. It's like comes and goes like this, right? So when we, I'm, I'm correlating this with when we show ourselves that we can push through uncomfortable physical stressors, it impacts us emotionally too. Oh my gosh, there's like a freaking blue jay right here. I'm just dying. California. Oh my gosh, this thing's beautiful. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so when you're able to sit through a cold shower or cold immersion or push yourself through a really intense workout, you increase the adaptability of your stress response and it will impact you emotionally as well. I sat and do you guys know Dr. Fit and Fabulous, Jamie Seaman and her husband, Ben Sergeant Fit and Fabulous. The three of us sat and talked for a long time yesterday. We were just sitting there talking for a couple hours and um, Jamie's husband is a cop and he was talking about how resilient, I'm sorry, this is maybe a little weird, but he was talking about, um, how resilient, like a lot of the homeless population is like their adaptability to stress, like physical stressors of being out and cold out in Omaha, Nebraska. Right. And I was thinking about that and I was like, wow, yeah, that makes sense, man. They're out in the elements all the time. Their bodies are like adapting to be able to withstand these kinds of stressors. Interesting, right? <laughs> I don't know, it kind of got me thinking. And I think it's so important if you're just like, life is just like right here all the time. You're never pushing any sort of limits. You're never, you're not building stress tolerance. You're not building resiliency. So like, <laughs> Think about that in terms of longevity. Think about, okay, maybe you're 35 right now. Maybe you're 45. Someday you're gonna be 85. So if all these years, all these decades, you're just sitting there like at this level all the time, what happens when you gotta go do something hard when you're 80? You can't anymore. You have not built any sort of stress tolerance to it. And we know we have enough examples now of some older people who have, you know, Kathy Smith is a great example. Do you guys know Kathy Smith? I think Kathy is 67, if I'm not mistaken. She used to be like a fitness icon back in the 80s and 90s. 
I know Kathy. I'm going to turn around. I know Kathy because she lives in Utah where I live and she's so freaking inspiring. She's the same age as my mom. They're almost the exact same age. My mom like kind of let go of health. She was like this all-star athlete, track athlete. She let go of health. She developed type two diabetes. She became obese. She didn't exercise. She didn't eat good food. And my mom is in a nursing facility. She's had a stroke. She can't walk anymore. It sucks, right? And Kathy, I, I kind of look at her life trajectory and she's the same age as my mom. And she just kept training. She just kept working out. She kept eating healthy. She kept pursuing. She's very like way in a mindset and all that stuff too. And Kathy can kick my ass in the gym. She's I'm like, oh my God, I can't even do that girl. She's going across like those like muscle beach type rings and doing toes to bar and box jumps at 67 years old. Right. And it's fascinating to me. I'm like, wow, that's possible when you take care of yourself and you push yourself and you're willing to go into these high intensities and also recover and also nourish and also rest and all these things. It's crucial for longevity. And I'm grateful for the examples that we have out there. People who are doing that into their 60s and 70s now, because we know that's possible. Thanks for being, thanks for being a light. Thanks for being teachers. So anyway, um, <laughs> this morning I, it's been a little bit of shit show. I'm not going to lie. Cause I did not, this is my bad, but I did not check to see if the gold's gym that I got my little pass to while I'm out here was open early on Saturday and they're not, <laughs> they're not open until seven. So I've been like driving around trying to find a gym and all this stuff. And I, you know, sometimes people will say to me like, Oh, I just need to be more consistent. I just gotta make myself do it. I'm like, that's not that's not where it's at. When you can find joy in it, get yourself some good music, be proactive about a playlist that you like, keep finding it, right? Like get good shoes, clothes. These are Vivos. I know people have asked me like crazy. These are Vivo Barefoots. I love Vivo. I do rep Vivo. So there's a coupon code on my website if you want Vivos. It's kind of, they're amazing barefoot shoes. I, love, I got my comfy workout clothes. I love going in there, having fun, getting my pre-workout going, my jams. It's like heaven. I love it. And I love seeing what I'm capable of. It's not like, oh, I got to go work out so I don't get fat. It's not like that at all. That would be a very miserable gym existence for me. If the only reason I was going in there is to like try to not be fat and blah, 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 and all aesthetic, it would be very empty. It would be a means to an end instead of an experience that I love. And when you can get in that mode of like the gym is for me to go have fun and explore what my body's freaking capable of and push limits, it gets fun. I, I tell my clients all the time, I'm like, have you ever noticed how boring it is in the gym when you're not pushing yourself? It's boring. If I'm sitting there doing goblet squats or something and I'm like, D -d -d it's so boring. So I look for la that if I'm feeling bored in the gym, I'm like, oh, it's because you're not pushing yourself going through the freaking motions. And so then when you start finding joy in it and having fun and you're like, oh, it's like scary. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's when it becomes fun. And you get all those longevity benefits. You get the hormone shifts that are going to work in your favor. Um, if you go heavy enough, you can start to work on bone density for longevity. And yeah, the met metabolic health also impacts your mental health, right? So cannot be underestimated. Do not underestimate the power of training and training intensely, right? Yes, there's a learning curve. You gotta learn the proper form and all those things. But once you do, you gotta freaking hit that go button or you're missing out on so many of the benefits. We need to not be afraid to come out of just like being like right here all the time. Right, hit the intensity levels, like go, see what this baby can do. And then bring it down and say, thank you. You're doing a great job. Here's some yummy food. Now you can rest, get enough sleep, all those things, right? It's just such a fun way to live. And it is like, to me, the key to a long and happy life. <laughs> Susie, I'd love to gym join, but I'm actually at the gym right now. Get it, girl. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> I got three minutes to mine opens. Let's freaking go. <laughs> so
So just a reminder, working out is so much more than just looking better. We got this, that mentality to me is like nineties bullshit. <laughs> Who cares? It's not about what you look like. It's about changing your entire quality of life, the length of your life. I, I always think like, you'd be amazed when you look at some pe people's like body composition. You might be 140 pounds and you might be 40% body fat. You know, how, like I'm just being real. This is very common for women. Do you know how much harder that's making your life? Like just going around on the daily when you can't, like everything is harder because you have no muscle, right? You're like carrying, you're like dragging your body around instead of like, room, let's go, right? So it's like weight, going off of weight is freaking ridiculous. It's cool. You got a number on a, an arbitrary number on a scale lower and you have no freaking muscle. So everything in your life is harder and your metabolic health sucks. Cool. Keep starving yourself. That sounds like a great way to live. Not. And now you've become dependent on cardio and these low level, you know, chronic cardio, no intensity things just so you don't get fat. You want to know how it's like way easier to not get fat, have freaking muscle. You burn more calories all day long. You become a machine. You become a freaking machine. That's why people make fun of me. I get it all the time and I like it. I like it. Um, when I'm on trips with people, they're like, girl, you can freaking take down the food. I'm like, yes, I can. I'm like, I got to feed the machine. <laughs> okay. So don't be afraid of that. We cannot, especially women. It breaks my freaking heart. We've been so indoctrinated, so brainwashed that we should just literally practically like try our hardest to just like wither away and disappear. And it's killing our women. It's not about being skinny. It's fucking bullshit. It makes me mad. Yes, I must swear. Because <sighs> it's destroying our health. We want our bodies to thrive. And in order to thrive, we need nutrients. And when you can only eat a thousand calories a day without getting fat because you have no freaking muscle and you're never hitting intensity levels, how are you going to get all those nutrients in? You're not. <laughs> Good luck. So go be a bad A. Go push yourself. Your entire quality of life and length of your life depends on it. Um, time to do the work. Thank you. Yeah, it's so much more. It's not... It, when, when we can heal <laughs> and get past all this mentality... What? Are we serious right now? Look at these things. They're like huge. Like this is my hand. <laughs> wow. But when you get past these mentalities that we're, like all of our health efforts are just to look a certain way or like be more attractive for other people. When we get rid of that bullshit and we start doing it for us to feel good and honoring these sick freaking machines that our souls are in and see what they're capable of. All of your desires change. Yeah, food. I'm like yesterday I was really hungry. I had a lot. I was just like, I'm freaking hungry. Okay. And, and, but my desires were nutrients, nutrients, nutrients. I don't even want crap because I want my body to thrive. I'm getting that mentality. It just gets so much easier. Shona, go crush it, girl. Tell your daughter I said hi. Where's a reliable source to get my body comp checked? Um, DEXA body. If you are lucky enough to have a DEXA body where you live, DEXA scans are where it's at for body composition testing. Alright, that's all. My gym's open now. I'm gonna go crush it. <laughs> Alright, have a good day guys. Bye.